Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid D. It's the beginning of December, so I thought I would do an Orchids in Bloom video, show you everything that's in bloom at the moment. I can't remember the last time I did one of these, but uh, the Orchids in the Shade House are still doing very, very well. Um, I have moved some other quite low light orchids, like the jewel orchids, out here because I don't really look after them very well inside anyway. Um, so it's if it can't live out here, I'm probably just not going to keep it. And I'm going to start moving some of the house plants even out here as well. Not all of them, some of them look very, very nice inside, um, but some of them will come out here. So um, I might have missed a few blooms since I last showed you what is in bloom in this shade house. Um, so if I do have a photo, I will pop it down in this corner. It has been super super wet. If you remember this time two years ago we had like one of the driest years ever. I, I think actually it was like the hottest um, year since like the 1800s and the driest and we obviously had all those awful awful bushfires. Um, this year it was like the wettest November in 150 years or something. We've got flash flooding everywhere down the east coast of Australia. We've got more flood warnings here in Brisbane. If I had to choose one or the other, obviously I would choose this. It is super muggy today. Uh, there's not a huge amount of airflow. So, I mean, you still, you can still have problems, but the orchids do tend to like this sort of weather, weather a lot more. So I'm just going to walk around the shade house and show you what's up. So let's start down here with these amazing buds. This is Aerides Hulishiana. Um, it's been working on these spikes for well over a month now and it should be in bloom by Christmas I would think. One of my favourite um, orchid scents. It's a really, really intoxicating, beautiful citrusy smell and I can't wait to smell it again. So back here we've got Asco Phoenicia peaches. A gorgeous little reliable bloomer every December and not as big a blooming as we've had in the past but I think you can see that some more buds developing oh yeah there's one spike back there as well so it might just be a bit more of a sporadic blooming this year um, last year I did mention that she wasn't fragrant um, but today I am sensing a very very mild fragrance from it a little bit vanilla-y but I have to put my nose right up to it. These blooms are very very cute. Not super long lasting, maybe a couple of weeks if that. There we go. Asco Phoenicia peaches just coming into bloom now. Now let's have a look at the fowls because they are all out here now bar maybe three of them which I'm just keeping on display inside. But we have got this Phalaenopsis papiago here still in bloom so I showed it to you last time. Phalaenopsis blooms just last ages when it's really wet it can damage the blooms a bit but the phalaenopsis seems to take them pretty well like you'll you'll notice on the cat layers and things like that they do um, develop a little bit of like the botrytis dots like you can see one dot there but the fowls do tend to withstand the rain pretty well and water damage this is a little no idea called tropical punch still in bloom from last time it lasts ages these really thick waxy blooms bloomed ones tend to uh, be very resistant to damage this is phalaenopsis sogo euclidean big big bloom a late blooming compared to last year but you can see the big spike that she's been working on so i do believe the sogo euclidean has a lot of potential but the conditions that it was in while it was inside were suboptimal so i mean this is this is quite a nice spike. You know, none of the none of the fowls, none of the orchids really, have had a fantastic year of um, growing. And if you want a good bloom, uh, when it comes to blooming season for a lot of these seasonal plants, you really have to look after them year round. So I think there's a lot of potential in this in this phalaenopsis, uh, but it hasn't quite been able to reach it this year. This one's still in bloom. Back here, this Phalaenopsis has been renamed Phalaenopsis Mabel, uh, and it's um, it, it's just in memory of a little girl named Mabel 
who passed away a couple of months ago at only six months old. Um, she was the daughter of one of my friends from Mother's Group, pretty much the same age as Maisie, and yeah, just devastating. Really quickly passed away from a pneumococcal meningitis. Yeah, it, it, it's really close to home as well. But you know, I need to tell you about these things because it gives a certain meaning to growing these plants. Um, and you know, every year this girl is going to flower at the same time. You know, plants can really hold this emotional significance um, and help us to remember things as well. Up here we've got some blooms fading on Fowl Ox Red Sesame. Gorgeous little leopardy Phalaenopsis there. Here we've got the orchid that my grandma gave me a few years ago. Still blooming, still holding on to its flowers. And here we've got Phalaenopsis Equestris coming into bloom. Look at that cute little spike, teeny tiny little flowers. These blooms, I mean, they're not fragrant that I can tell, but they don't really need to be because the bloom is just so cute. Up here we've got my fuchsia coloured no ID with a very, very late spike. Um, I don't think it started developing the spike till it came out here, so just goes to show it was just waiting for the right conditions. In this corner, another late blooming for another gorgeous white fowl, not as big as the Sogo Euclidean. But this one as well blooms for my little dog Sebastian, who is just as white and puffy. Such a gorgeous dog, passed away a few years ago when I first started this channel. And uh, yeah, again, every time, every time it blooms, I remember little Sebastian and how gorgeous he was. This one facing the wrong way, a very awkward bloom. This one is Matuo Sun King. Look at the colour, so glossy. While I'm here, I thought I'd just show you Phalaenopsis bellina. Um, you can notice that these two new leaves are much, much smaller than the old ones. It just didn't fare well with the neglect that it's faced in the last year. But, can you notice, it is putting out a new bloom spike for this summer. So that is a very promising sign. Now, not too much to show you on this top shelf. We have missed a few blooms. Um, there was a cat layer in bloom back here. This was Potanara. Burdekin star bright um, crossed with Jean May. We've got a nice spike developing here on a veranda with a completely faded label. We'll find out what that is when it comes. We've got a couple of cat layer buds here and Gerardo Nando Vedana. Um, I get a better show with the cat layer usually in autumn, but I do get a few random blooms um, in summer, and they're usually the ones that are like that bloom multiple times a year. This Ascascenda Sook Sun Run Sunlight has faded. It blooms multiple times a year, so you will definitely see it again soon. But um, I will show you the blooms in the corner there. And back here, we do have a couple of spikes. We've got Venara Golden Spice with a bloom spike there. Another regular bloomer multiple times a year. And we've got Encyclia cochleata two lovely bloom spikes coming up um, it, it did bloom last year it was a pretty poor blooming it was kept um, in my mum's patio for a few months and that was its first blooming uh, and yeah hopefully this this bloom show will be much more indicative of what the plant's going to be like I just skip back here but the frags are all out here um, they weren't doing very well on my balcony so they all got moved out here as well uh, I do have this bloom spike developing on Frag Cardinal. And down here, we've got a few little Neophoenicias in bloom. They seem to be very sensitive to the rain and they went a little bit of a yellow color with the rain pretty quickly. I mean, they're not super long lasting blooms, but they usually last a bit longer than this. So this is only after about a week and a half. Um, they're starting to fade already. I do believe I saw another spike so this one back here is developing a couple of spikes. Um, this Neophoenicia should spike. I'm not sure if it will. It had a pretty tough year. Um, and this is Lucineri, which usually, I think, blooms in autumn. Paphia petalums doing great. You see, I have moved my Ludicias out here. And they're doing wonderfully, actually. So a little bit of a protected spot again. They're doing much better than they were inside. Over here I have got 
Encyclia prismatocarpa. These blooms last ages, but they are fading now. You can see they're just darkening a little bit. But this is a truly gorgeous bloom. So in its prime, it's got this beautiful pink on its lip. Oh, there's, there's a good bloom. Been in bloom for weeks, maybe three, three weeks now. Not fragrant at all, but long lasting blooms. So that really does make up for it. Now a couple that we did miss, this um, Renanthera amiani, um, also I think a little bit sensitive to the rain, uh, but it did have a little spider web attached there, which isn't, isn't great for the flowers. As much as I, I hate ruining the spider webs, I, I really wish I had um, taken more care with this little spider web because yeah, just very prematurely destroyed my blooms. We've still got this Atria violaceum flower in bloom. So the Latorias also very long lasting flowers, definitely beginning to fade. And I got one single bloom from my Max Maxillaria tenifolia. Well, hopefully these these guys will be happy happier um, next year with their blooming because they had a really really tough year. Another spike here um, on my very recently bloomed uh, Mimi Palmer Vanda Tessellata, gorgeous fragrant bloom. Now this one is amazing. This is Brassia Rex. Oh my gosh. Can you see the length of these petals? They truly look like big spidery blooms. Look at that. Isn't that phenomenal? They are huge, huge. Even I wasn't expecting them to be this big, but that is so cool. Dendrobium little green apples, my gorgeous faithful Latoria that just explodes every summer. I constantly lose count. This is at least like 10 spikes going on here. So this Latoria actually does bloom all year, like just on and off it puts out spikes all throughout the year and then it just has one explosive show every like November, December. Look at all those spikes. Look how big this plant is getting. Yeah, not for the faint-hearted, it, it does actually grow into a massive plant, so just be warned. But if you want a very, very reliable bloomer with just very sweet, beautiful blooms, this is a very easy plant to grow. So I've got a few Oncidiums in bloom. These guys are definitely better bloomers through autumn. But here we've got Oncidium Space Race Chanel. Very, very cute and a very lovely fragrance. So a little bit similar to a lot of these smaller Oncidiums. Not quite like the Sherry Baby. It's really more of like a caramel fragrance if I had to pick it. But, but yeah, very strong and a very, very cute flower to boot. I've had a couple of random spikes on my Sherry Baby. Um, I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember when it normally does have its blooming, but I've said for like, I don't know, three years, this plant needs repotting and, oh gosh, it desperately, desperately needs a bigger pot. I don't even, I'm not even brave enough to look down there, but oh, look, it's, it's messy, it's messy. Anyway, this spike just opened. I can smell the chocolate fragrance from up here. My beautiful Sherry baby. We're losing this bloom spike, but um, if I do have a photo, I will pop it down here. I've got no label on it, guys. It's obviously um, a, a brassier cross um, and very, very pretty green blooms. Got my Oncidium Wildcat fading. These blooms didn't last too long in that very heavy rain, um, but it lost a bloom spike just about a month ago. And this one is fading too. And I've got a spike here on, on an Oncidium with no ID. So we'll see what that is when it blooms. Oh, sun's coming out and it is quite hot. And uh, Robert's Delight, Alexander opening up here. Very beautiful purple blooms. True purple. So nice. This is a lovely, lovely bloom. Moderate size, but still a very good size bloom and they tend to get a little bit bigger with time this is probably close to its full size really pretty a couple more to show you just check that 
Little Maisie's still asleep, and she is. But look up here. Holy moly. That is one of my earliest orchids. It is my first Androbium. It was from my grandma. It was falling out of the pot when I got it. Split it into two plants. I believe that little one is a keiki of this mother plant. It also blooms on and off all year. But look at this. That is wild. So pretty. So when it just has like one bloom spike, I kind of find it a little bit of an underwhelming bloom. But when it blooms like this, that is really nice. Now, this is something to show you. Look at all these spikes emerging. This girl has loved the rain. And it is my Cattleya Zip. Lelia tenebrosa crossed with Milleri. Tenebrosa being a 4N and prominent in its genetics. So this spike is fading, this one here, which was in my last Lelia video. Um, you might see like all my other Lelia purpuratas have finished blooming. Their blooms did not last very long, um, maybe a week max. Might have had something to do with the rain, but they've all fallen now. Uh, this one lasts a lot longer. And I had to open up this sheath because there was water in it. Um, so I've been keeping an eye out, but I wouldn't be surprised if these were filled with water. Can you see that? I don't really like the stems sitting in water. Um, they can't absorb that water and all it's going to do is damage the flower spike, I feel. Make it prone to rot. Well, that water can heat up if it's full sun on it, which also can't be very good once these spikes emerge. See all that water? I mean, this isn't always the case. It's just been like torrential rain out here. Whoop. More water. So yeah, just something, something to keep an eye on. But let's have a close look at these blooms because they are very, very pretty. Look at the colour. Look at the lip. So the colour is like slightly browny red. Absolutely beautiful. And the lip is a gorgeous pinky purple. It's not heavily fragrant. Being nothing like the Lelia purpuratas. And oh, little ladybug. Have to watch for bugs. I will show you at the end of this video some dendrobium beetle damage. Um, I have found a couple of dendrobium beetles in here. But we'll just enjoy these blooms for one second longer. And I will post on Instagram when these open. These buds going to open soon. Got two, three more spikes developing as well, which are still in their sheets. Now, finally, I have this amazing banner to show you. Look how huge these blooms are. They are massive. So they cover my whole hand, but what makes it so spectacular is these bottom sepals. They're so huge and round. So this tag has completely faded. I'll put the proper name down here, but I think it's Vanda Cruchom Big Red or something like that. And it's actually more of a pink. It's not a true red. Look at these blooms. So let me also show you this. This is where I found the Dendrobium beetle. That's what, that's what they do. And I remember when we were at our last house, a Dendrobium beetle did exactly the same thing to these blooms. They are extremely difficult to kill. They are very difficult to even compress and kill. It took real smashing down with my nail and I know that sounds really cruel and disgusting but oh they, they are really difficult to kill so uh, make sure they're dead before like you you open up your hand and get a tissue. That's the only way I've found kills them well like manually. Once they start breeding and you start getting the little flying dendrobiums in there I think they're in their adolescent stage it's they're extremely difficult to control and get rid of and kill so yeah hopefully hopefully that doesn't happen in here because I would be devastated but yes at least this dendrobium beetle's dead it only affected a couple of these blooms the rest are completely intact look he's come to join us Maisie's just woken up from her nap say hi Maisie hello say hi and we're down the side of our house and just going to show you one last little bloom that's down here. So this is where I've got the epidendrums at the moment. Um, and look, it's a really bright spot, especially this 
time of year the sun's right overhead but I want to move my Hoyas from the shade house so I might put them out here it's probably not the best spot for them in the shade house they're really rambly uh, and I can put other stuff there that I don't know I kind of think I will enjoy more so yeah that's that's the plan at the moment this is Epidendrum Tiny Valley there was a spider on it but she is my favorite Epidendrum I just love the color I've got another bloom spike here so I've only got one hand, it's really difficult to show you, but if I go underneath here, there's actually like a secondary bloom spike from the bottom of an old bloom. So, I mean, these epidendrums do have a lot of potential for branching, secondary spikes, they're sequential bloomers, so they just continually bloom. But anyway guys, now that the rain stop, it is muggy and hot, so we are going to go inside into the air conditioning and maybe have some lunch. Does that sound amazing? Maisie says, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful December. And if I don't get around to making another video, I hope you guys have... Oh, don't touch it. There's a spider there. Um, if, you, if I don't post another video, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and Happy New Year. But hopefully I'll get around to one more video. Happy growing, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.